Engineering and Management. Today, I'm here to share with you more about what is the Industrial and Systems Engineering. So, what do people in Industrial Systems and Engineering or ISC do? Okay, we are basically people who are very passionate in solving industry problems that arise from many different areas and domains, including logistics, business, engineering, energy, supply chain, etc. Okay, and we do this with the use of various scientific approaches founded in data analytics, computer and systems modeling, decision making and management techniques. Okay, so for the industrial and systems engineering people, we always focus on improving the whole system performance and whole system performance is talking about productivity, quality, cost, safety, sustainability, etc. So why is this whole system performance very important? Well, when we propose solutions for solving problems, we want to make sure that we don't have any blind spots or what we say, the unintended consequences that some of this performance may be compromised in the future. And furthermore, we want to look for solutions that can result in win-win situations or create synergies across different performance measures. This diagram here, hope to show you a more detailed uh, concept about the ISC uh, framework. Okay, so on the top there, we see many different application domains. So for the first one, the uh, container yard uh, operations. Okay, so you can see that uh, we don't build the marine vessels or the bunkers, but do you know that stacking of these containers from the land to the sea and then from the sea to the land is actually a very intricate problem and requires very careful planning and scheduling because it will affect our this uh, container yard throughput uh, immensely. And our department has been very active uh, in contributing to the capabilities in this area. And for the second one, for the transportation, as we know, the online retailing has been uh, very important, especially in this era. Okay, and problems such as first mile logistics, last mile logistics has become ever uh, significant. So uh, third party logistics providers are always looking to improve their this uh, vehicle routing, vehicle fleet management, how to position their mobile warehouses to improve their service quality and cost performance. Third, for the manufacturing, this is an area that our uh, department and program has contributed uh, immensely over the past decades to help production and manufacturing improve and streamline their processes. And especially in this era of big data, internet of things and uh, emerging technologies such as digital twins, and we continue to make a lot of contributions over there. Next, for the finance sector, our graduates also contribute a lot in this sector through their knowledge and skill sets in data science, risk analytics to help financial institutions and firms to do projections and manage their risk portfolios. Finally, we also contribute to service systems, for example, like healthcare systems, as you know, is very, very critical, especially from the uh, COVID episode, okay? Critical resources such as doctors, nurses, beds needs to be very carefully managed in order to deliver the top quality uh, service performance. So if you look at across all these different uh, application areas and problems, there are some things that is very common across them. Okay, first, they are very dynamic. That means they keep changing over time. And second, there is a lot of randomness, okay? So nobody is able to pin down very clearly what is going to be happening in the future, okay? Third, although they are very random, okay, there is also a lot of data that is available that is going to provide a lot of information for our decision making, okay? So based on these attributes, we actually uh, train our students and uh, in, in various tools that can tackle these problems. So the bottom here is showing some of the key pillars that our curriculum involves, right? So the first is on data analytics and decision making. So this is talking about uh, skill sets such as math, probability and statistics, operations research, machine learning, etc. Okay, so to also enable them to take advantage of state-of-the-art uh, computer tools and uh, computational modeling and development platforms, we also train them in simulation 
uh, data structures, etc. Aside these technical skills, we also emphasize a lot on uh, project and operations management skills, such as financial, uh, finance and cost accounting, total quality management, engineering, economics, etc. Finally, we also want to groom our students and graduates in the future to become leaders of engineering. And this is what systems engineering is about. Okay, we expose them to broad concepts of systems thinking and inform them about the strategic uh, thinking in uh, various systems such as supply chain, manufacturing service systems. Okay, so we emphasize a lot on providing a future-proof and career-ready curriculum for our students over here in ISE, right? So one of the capstone projects that students are involved in is this system design project, this course that spans over two semesters. So we group the students up and then partner them with collaborator companies, such as uh, those that is shown here. Of course, there is a much longer list, that, but due to the space constraint, we do not list everything here. Okay, so we have been running this uh, course for several years now. And the uh, response from these collaborator companies has been uh, uh, fantastic. Okay, so for example, we help some of these uh, com collaborator companies to do uh, airport logistics operations improvement, uh, digitizing their warehouse operations, and also uh, helping them in their the digital transformation processes. Okay, so this project actually uh, enable the companies to reap uh, potential savings and uh, bottom line savings. So if you are interested to find out uh, more about uh, these uh, system design projects and the past projects that the students have embarked on, please feel free to visit our website or scan the QR code there. Besides that, the department also uh, hosts two research centers of excellence. That is the Center for the uh, Next Generation Logistics and Next Generation Ports. So these centers uh, aim to be the lead in this uh, capability building in logistics modeling, simulation and optimization for next generation ports. So we actually work very closely with the professors, researchers, uh, the graduate students over there to craft out uh, interesting projects, internship opportunities, and even career path uh, plans okay, for our students. We also jointly uh, conduct some uh, workshops to reach out to prospective students like yourselves. Okay, um, quite recently we conducted some uh, workshops to let them have hands-on on the uh, some of the simulation modeling platforms that we use for teaching and for research. Okay, so here is a little bit of a high-level summary about the recent this uh, graduate employment uh, survey data, which I do not want to go into too much detail here. But we can see from the table, the highlighted one is for the IC uh, program, right? So we have the uh, following uh, full-time employment uh, and the median salary statistics as shown, okay? So just to get a sense of the reference, the overall is tabulated in the uh, following row. And we can see that we are doing uh, no worse than the overall, right? So and in fact, we are above right? This uh, across these two performance measures. And... You know, a lot of people like to, uh, of course, think about ISE as a hybrid of engineering and business. So we also uh, showed in the last two rows, the uh, statistics uh, for the full-time employment and the medium uh, salary. So by the way, this one is collated across all the four autonomous universities. Okay, so you can see for the figures that we are actually uh, doing well, right? Uh, in comparison to these three uh, benchmarks, okay? So the bottom a graphic here shows where our graduates are actually being placed and contributing in the various sectors. So this is based on the linking profiles on, for our alumni. So we gather the data from them and then uh, summarize over here uh, <clears throat> for reference. Okay, so you can always visit our this uh, department website for more details, right? So you can see that our graduates uh, contribute across these various sectors and it shows that the skill sets that we impart to these uh, students are highly valued, okay, uh, to employers across all these different sectors in the economy. Okay, I want to share with you guys this article about the future of work, right? So this is based on a uh, 
on a speech given by our uh, DPM Heng sometime in the middle of last year, right? So I kind of just uh, blow up this first sentence, okay, for, for us to take a look, right? So it says that ASEAN is a good position to contribute and benefit from major shifts in future of work, such as green transition, digitization, and resilience of supply chains, right? So these three areas are going to be very, very important, okay? Especially when you guys come out into the workforce, right? So take note of these three areas because it is very close to the heart of what ISE is really trying to contribute. And in line with that, okay, let me talk about this area of specialization that uh, our, this IIC program offers, right? So we can see that we first have supply chain analytics and then analytics and decision intelligence and sustainability analytics. So these three and the third one is something that is upcoming, right? So it's in the pipeline of uh, uh, mounting, right? So you can see that these three uh, AOS are really in line with these uh, three uh, key areas of, of the future of work, right? So for the supply chain analytics, these students, we let them deep dive into the uh, techniques of uh, operations, research, pricing and revenue management, supply chain modeling, et cetera, okay? So other than the uh, math and the modeling, data and analytics is also very important, right? So the second uh, pillar or the AOS is uh, exposing, and uh, uh, allowing the students to go further and deeper into machine learning techniques for industrial engineering, uh, decision and risk analytics, predictive analytics, et cetera, okay? So for the sustainability analytics, we also uh, give students uh, the exposure to emissions accounting, em systems analysis, energy systems modeling and optimization, carbon market uh, mechanisms, et cetera. Right. So you may think that, you know, what is IC got to do with like uh, sustainability? Shouldn't we leave it to like the uh, climate activists or some other uh, specialization? Right. So this is where that, you know, it is really very important. Okay. So because of the future of work, right? and the commitment by the Singapore to achieve net zero by 2050, okay? By the time you enter the workforce until 2050, this is the time when you're going to be actively contributing to the workforce, right? And you can imagine from now until net zero, there's going to be such a drastic transformation in the way people do the operations, strategy, think, and their uh, uh, workplace processes, et cetera. There will be a massive transformation that nobody can avoid. Okay, so that is where I want to come in to build a case for this uh, up and coming new sustainability analytics uh, specialization that we are pushing for. Okay, so uh, right, so on the left hand side of this chart uh, that is taken from the My Skill Future uh, website. Okay, so this is for the uh, jobs that require these skills. Okay, in the energy and power sector. Right, so you can see that the top five skills over there. Okay, it's really something that is uh, very close to what our expertise in uh, this uh, IIC is, right? Business intelligence, okay, technology road mapping, system framework development, applications of uh, artificial intelligence, etc. Okay, so you may think that how can IIC graduates do well in energy uh, or power sector, right? So on the uh, screenshot on the right here, uh, this gentleman here is our this uh, alumni from 2018, okay, our BH alumni, right? So he is currently a head, one of the head of a, uh, this uh, energy investment and consulting firm in Singapore and is doing extremely well over there, okay? So what about uh, other sectors, right? Uh, that has nothing to do with energy and power, okay? So you may think that, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to be energy and power sector, right? So in fact, if you look, look at the graphic at the bottom, there is a current, uh, a recent snapshot from the uh, Financial Times article, Okay, so financial firms are actually uh, having a very uh, large demand for sustainability experts. Okay, so as we know, we place a lot of graduates in the finance sector because of our training in analytics. So what has financial firms got to do with sustainability, you may ask, right? So that is where it is very important. Financial institutions such as banks, they need to plan very carefully their future loan investment portfolio moving forward. Right, so they have to be very careful if they are going to invest in something, some companies or some uh, corporations that is going to be uh, emitting a lot of uh, this uh, this greenhouse gases. Right, so are are they going to fund 
uh, companies that have going to be very good green transition potential, right? So these are things that is very, very important. And the financial institutions actually have a very, very important role to play in this uh, net zero. Okay, so furthermore, uh, what about the, 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 the expertise about the ISC and sustainability? Okay, so I want to show you, the graphic is a bit small, so do bear with me, but I'll just uh, quickly, the details are not important. On the top panel, we can see that uh, to do actually this analysis of uh, sustainability and climate change, actually it boils down to using a lot of computer models, right? And these models actually can be optimization-based models. It can be econometric models. It can be simulation tech models, right? It can be uh, bottom-up technology-rich models. And all these models is something that IC training uh, provides our students that we uh, provide our students with, they can comfortably go into, right? And you can see that for the second one, uh, in fact, yes, uh, you know, climate scientists, researchers, they use a lot of these models and data to actually do the future projections about how the future is going to look like in the so-called the different scenarios, okay, in terms of the emissions, okay? And on the right, okay, data analytics is going to play a very important role too. Right, because now companies, corporations, and banks they need to track, okay, uh, the emissions that is coming out, right, uh, from their operations, etc. And they need to project, they need to predict how this uh, emissions is going to look like for each and every step of the process, right? So uh, data analytics and artificial intelligence becomes very, very important in uh, supporting this part. Okay, so what I want to say is, you know, I see actually we are very well aligned with this area through our capabilities in systems modeling, data science, uh, et cetera, okay? At the bottom panel, right, is some of the current and ongoing work that our students and researchers uh, are embarking on in this area, right? So we are able to uh, map out the uh, systems, right, the energy systems uh, for the supply demand systems for the entire country or even region, use some of these uh, very uh, important and reputable uh, computer platforms to do uh, these uh, emissions projections and analysis. And the last one, we can also use optimization models to uh, plan how the cross-border grid, right? If you know about cross-border grid, Singapore is looking to import electricity, clean electricity from the neighboring countries and et cetera. And this actually involves a lot of optimization, right? So uh, this, I hope it can give you uh, a flavor of the type of things that we actually are very passionate and can uh, do in. Right, I also want to take the time to uh, uh, do a small advertisement. So next week, we have this virtual event, okay, on 1st of March, 2 to 3 p.m. on the uh, Zoom platform, right? So because of the uh, limited time that we have today, okay, we can't go into too much detail about uh, individual uh, projects and all that, but we'll have students to uh, give a first-hand sharing on some of the projects, like the system design projects, and also their school life, and also some of their internship exchange opportunities. So please do join us uh, in the virtual event next week, right, by uh, scanning this uh, QR code. Okay, I've come to the end of my uh, sharing, right? So I hope to see you guys join our ISM family soon. Please vi visit our website and scan the QR code to find out more information about our department. Thank you very much. Bye.